Hello and welcome to Ms. Cooper's art class. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do the single crochet stitch. Um, so this video assumes that you already know how to do a slip knot and if you don't, I do have a video on how to do that. So you'll already know how to make a slip knot and how to hold your crochet hook and yarn and also how to do some basic chaining. So if you don't know how to do those things, I do have videos for that. But what I'm going to show you is how do you do a single crochet? This is where you have your chain, but now you can start building it up and making it into something a little bit more solid. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chains right now. So that means that my project is just going to be this wide. It's just going to be the 10 chains wide. And I'm okay with that because I'm just showing you how to do something. So anytime you're making a single crochet, they are about one chain tall. So I'm actually, instead of doing a stitch, my first single crochet in this row is actually not a single crochet at all. It's a chain because here's what happens. This first chain right here needs to have another chain sitting in it in this row. So if I were to you know, count one, two, three, four, all the way to 10. This one I counted as one that has a chain already sitting in it functioning as a stitch and I keep bending it upwards to show it's standing up like a stitch. So anytime you do that you're going to add one chain at the beginning of your row. Your next step is to dive through into your next chain. So you know this chain is a stitch, this one's already accounted for. We're going to dive into this next V right here. So we're going to go in and use the pointy part of your hook. We're just going to dive in and I only go through the one loop when I start. I find it makes my project a little more flexible. Not everybody does this. This is just how I like to start. So right now I have my actual chain and my other loop on the hook. What I'll do is yarn over and pull just my chain through. This way I've basically picked up this chain. You can see it's a nice wide loop that I'm working into. Then I yarn over from the back all the way going towards me and towards my hand. And I'm going to pull through two loops this time. So I'm going to use the hook to my advantage. I'm going to use this finger to slide everything along, my right pointer finger. I'm going to slide these things along. And I'm going to pull with my left hand. I'm going to pull these two loops over the front one to make a stitch. Now I'll know that I've used this chain already because it's kind of big and there's a little hole there. So this part, this chain is already accounted for. So I'm going to move over to this next one right here. I'm going to use my pointy end of my crochet hook to dive in here. I'm going to yarn over from the back to the front here. and I'm going to pull up that chain onto my loop. Now I'm working with it. Now I'm going to yarn over again. Again, I'm going to use my right pointer finger to push and my left hand to pull. And I'm going to pull these two loops over. This chain is in action. I need to move to the next one. I'm going to dive in, yarn over, pull up my chain. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull through those loops. And you'll notice I turn my crochet hook. If it's upright, I have to pull everything upright. I find it easier to let my hook just spin when I pull my loops over. And you can see how now I'm building up some height in this first row. So again, I'm going to look at the next chain, the one right here. I'm going to dive, yarn over, pull up my chain, yarn over, pull through my two. There's another single crochet. So what I say in my head over and over as I do this is I go dive, one, two. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive, one, two. Dive, one, two. And you'll notice that this is curling a bit. That's pretty normal for a first row. And it tends to uncurl as you go. So don't, don't think too hard about that. That 
part is, is going to kind of fix itself later and I'll just push it out of the way as we go. And now I'm at my last chain so I'm going to dive in there. I'm going to pull over a one loop and then I'll yarn over and pull through my two loops. So now I've just finished my first row and you can see how this is thicker and I purposefully chose a yarn that changes color so you can see that transition. Now I like going through just one loop at a time because I like this little twisted edge that I get at the bottom. I think that looks really pretty and I think um, that's stretchy enough for me. So if you see somebody do it differently, um, I, I'm usually the one that's doing it a little different than most people. So now you can see that there is, there's definitely a top and a bottom to this. So you know that the bottom where you started has the tail coming out. So we're not going to work into that. We are going to work into this top purple part up here. So remember the first single crochet in your row is always actually a chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. That's all. You can see this, this chain is kind of nestled inside of this V right here. So, so this part I'm going to cover because I'm not, I'm not working into that. I'm going to work into the rest of this row. Now this is a little different from the first row because um, instead of just diving through the back loop, and, and sorry my camera unfocused for a sec, um, instead of just diving through the back loop, I'm going to dive through both loops because it's actually quite easy to do. And you can even see, if I were to pull this and spread it apart, you can see a little gap right there that I'm going to pull, that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to dive and hold that V on my hook. So I want to dive, I have my V. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull that V up. I'm working with it now. I have it hooked onto my project. I'm going to yarn over and pull through too. So again, if I, if I pull this and spread it out, I can see my next stitch right here. I'm going to dive, yarn over, pull through this one section, yarn over, pull through two. Spread it out, look at that next one. Dive, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And so I will do this for the rest of the stitches in my row. I'm going to pull through this quickly here so you can see what we do at the end of the row because this is what tends to confuse people who are a little bit newer is what happens at the end of the row? What happens to that stitch? So this is where counting your stitches comes in really handy. So I can clearly see a gap right here where I'm going to put a stitch. Perfect. That's awesome. But if I were to turn around and move on to the next row, my edge would start to look a little bit uneven. I still have some unfinished business here at the end of the row that I need to take care of. It's this little loop right here. If I were to count how many um, stitches I have in this row, I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches in this row. I need to make sure I have my perfect 10 stitches. So what I'm going to do is pull up this loop at the end of the row right here. Because this is part of that chain that I had in my other row. So I'm going to pull that up onto my hook. So make sure you dive, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through too. And now you've completed a second row and you can see how the texture from the first row to the second row is a little bit different but the stitches still stack up very nicely and then I have that nice top row of chains to work from. My tail clearly sticks out the bottom. I didn't twist my piece as I went. So let's walk through another row here. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I just need one chain for that first stitch. Boom, there's one. Let's dive into the next one. This is stitch two going to go through that entire V, going to have them both sitting on there. Yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two. And so on for the rest of my row. And then I'll highlight at the end of the row how that end works again. So right now I, I had my chain. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two
three, four, five. So this is six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that means I still have a tenth stitch left. It's this top loop right here. So I'm going to dive into that top loop right there, and that is the end of my row with stitches. Um, now what I'll reiterate is that different people do things differently because they like their edges to look a certain way. I like my edges to look like this, where they kind of look um, a little bit twisted. Not everybody does that. So um, if you watch another tutorial, it might look a little bit different. The end result will be very similar, but we just have a slightly different look. So as long as you remember to add that last stitch to the end of your row, and remember that your first stitch is actually a chain, then you'll be good to go. But you can see my stitches are fairly consistent and the top is about the same width as the bottom. If you ever run into a problem where your width of your top and your bottom are different or that your edges are extremely bumpy, it might mean that you don't have the same number of stitches in each row and that maybe you need to undo it and fix some of those rows there where maybe you, you missed a stitch or where you added too many. So that is something to think about. But you can make an infinite number of things really with single crochet. Um, it's a nice basic stitch. It's very agreeable. It's very easy to work with. Um, and it builds up fairly quickly. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but because you can execute it really quickly, um, I find it quite useful for a lot of things, even if you are in kind of a hurry. It's also small and kind of nice and manageable so if you're doing something curved or something interesting you can make those small adjustments and it will look um, very smooth and nice and neat. Um, but with that I think you get the picture here so I'm going to end it there. Remember that when you are finishing off a crochet piece you can always just add a finishing chain and you'll be all done. So I'm going to open up my scissors, snip my end, yarn over, and then I can just pull through and tighten, and then I have this nice little flat crochet sample. Don't worry if your stitches aren't quite as even, that is okay. That's just how it goes while you're learning, and yours will get even with time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and that that was helpful. Um, definitely, uh, if you can, give a like if this was helpful. Comment any questions because I'd be happy to answer those. And subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching.